Hello everybody, this is Fabrica Mix 2019, uh, class 13, Skin Electronics with Katia Vega, a beauty technologist based in California, teaching at uh, UC Davis. We are very honored to have you with us for the third year here in Fabric Academy, and it's always like the most fun uh, and the nicest exercise for all the students before like going for the uh, holidays, the winter solstice. So uh, I will let you introduce yourself and then you can go ahead with the presentation and the, and the assignment. Uh, I think you need to uh, uh, wait. I will unmute. Unmute? Um, yes, now, 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 now. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to be uh, one more year here in Fabri Academy to see and also being inspired of what you guys are creating. Uh, it's every year, it's amazing and it's kind of amazing for me to be surrounded with all this creativity. Uh, I am Katia Vega. I am an assistant professor at the University of California in Davis. I am originally from Peru. I was a master's student, a PhD student in Brazil, in Puerto Rio. I did also an internship in Hong Kong, in HKDU. I did my postdoc at MIT Media Lab. And right now, as I say, I am assistant professor at UC Davis. And I will be talking a little bit of what the skin, what the skin means, and what are the possibilities right now for creating technology that could be on these two meters square of the skin that we have. And I will talk about some projects I was developing and also uh, I will share with you some ideas of assignments of what you could also create. Uh, so for today, we'll talk about skin interfaces, how we could go beyond wearables, how we could create technology that won't be just on clothing or accessories, but what about our skin? What about these, uh, our hair, our nails, our skin, and what, what's possible right now to create? Uh, we will be also be talking about beauty technology. That is a concept I created since 2012, and I have been developing different projects around that, and how to go for from invisible to visible on-body interfaces. And also we talk about the different project assignments that, that we are having, and I hope it will be a lot of fun. Please interrupt me. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or any ideas, I would love also to hear a little bit from your voices. Uh, so let's talk about wearable technologies, but what's more about that? And if you think about that, this is an image from uh, popular science uh, in the 60s. And that's how they were figuring out the cyber fashion will look like, that tomorrow's man will look like, and are all these gadgets that are around us, and it kind of like, you cannot even see maybe the person inside of that because there are all these gadgets that are very interesting, and some, some of them, like if you think about, oh, digital, a digital computer on your pocket, or uh, I don't know, regenerating waste full system, so uh, many of these things that uh, we are even using right now. Uh, they were creating this tomorrow's man. But if I ask you, uh, who looks like that right now? And if you see, and you could see even through the screen, as we are not using all these antennas or all these gadgets around our body. Uh, and even wearable technologies is evolved about a lot. If you think about wearable technologies right now, it's not something new. Researchers have been working with that since the 80s, like when, when at MIT Media Lab, they were wearing these laptops and going around campus and recording people. Uh, and right now you could buy actually 
different Fitbits, glasses, or even jackets, many other products, not just research, is something that you could actually get. Um, but if you think about that, uh, and what that's why I wanted you to reimagine, it's kind of like this is this class will be more a, a kind of a pass of what's possible and what could be possible. You think about that. Tomorrow you will be probably wearing another jacket or another t-shirt, uh, all their shoes, but your skin, your hair, your fingernails, uh, your hair will remain the same. And this is kind of like remain the same, but we we know that we evolve, we know that we uh, change our skin, uh, skin every 10 days, our nails grow, our hair grows, but as the way we look, we'll be still looking as we are. So how we could create technology that could look as we are, as part of our body. So there are many projects and this project comes out with these ideas of incorporating most of the electronic components into everyday uh, aesthetic ways that we enhance our body or modify our body. Like these fake nails from Cindy Cow that she was creating these nails that kind of like a touch screen that you could control your computer or your phone just by touching it. Uh, similar way, like different tattoos that we're creating by using different ways to encapsulate uh, conductive materials in a shape of a tattoo so you could also control different things. Other possibilities, and that's kind of like uh, more advanced technologies that we even, most of, some of them you could even get right now, are these tattoos. These tattoos that they uh, could be incorporating on your skin, uh, like the first one comes from Rogers Research Group from the University of Illinois, and this is the concept of epidermis electronics, that they create these different kind of meshes that will be combining on your skin and you could kind of measure different things like elasticity of your skin or even like a very popular one like L'Oreal that they create these UV patches so they could, they could know what's the UV light that you are having right now and when you will need, for example, more apply to, to apply more, uh, more sun cream. And, but now I wanted you to kind of like position in like what, what it means to create these wearable technologies and what's the difference between the different ways that we place technology on our body. You think about uh, on body technologies, all these technologies that we are creating right now and we could incorporate on our body. We could think about technology that you carry with you, like your smartphone, that's something that you are always incorporating in your, in, your, in your everyday life, but you carry that with you, you're not wearing them. There are technologies that are inside of the body. Most of them are medical devices that you could actually create some surgeries and incorporate that inside of your body. Uh, but actually there are other ones that you could even buy these a glass capsule RFIDs and you will like an injection, like a syringe, you could make a, your own surgery and place that inside your body. And there are many cases that they are using that for opening the doors in their office or paying the metro that that's actually not something available in places like Sweden. Uh, but if we think about on the body, if we think about on the body, we could think about wearables, uh, so different clothing or accessories that we're creating, like different pants, jackets, or glasses, or skin interfaces. And that's what we will be focusing today. How we could create a technology that could be directly on the skins or in their appendages. Appendages like uh, fingernails or the hair or goosebumps, for example. And this is part of uh, this, this, this configuration was created in the book, Beauty Technology, that uh, I brought together with Ugo Fuchs 
that it will also be available for you if you need more information about this. But I wanted to think about what it means to create these key interfaces that will be, with the, and what's the difference of creating wearables? Because there are many aspects that we need to think about. And you think about wearable technologies, uh, you have to think about that the body characteristics. So we have different sizes, different shapes of our body, the muscle strength that we have, it will be also kind of be something that we have to think about when we design a wearable. When we go to ski interfaces, there are other challenges. And uh, I will talk a little bit more about those ones. So we could think about, oh, okay. we could think about different skin types that we have. So there are many sensitive or dry skins that we could be dealing with. Uh, I even was creating once a project and for this person that, and we did many, many tests in different people, but when we wanted to implement that in our user, uh, his skin was super oily. So the materials that we were using weren't the best for, for him, so we had to change everything. So think about that as a way that there are many, many ways, many, many other, uh, let's say, factors that we will need to consider, like acne, body hair, wrinkles, and also even like cosmetic use that will be also creating another layer on our skin. And, but for that, uh, if you think about what exists right now as different ways that we modify our body, like with different tattoos, prosthetics, or cosmetics, or other kind of beauty products, there are there was a lot of advancement of how to place or how to use these kind of products on our body. And we'll be kind of exploring also a little bit more about that, of how this was creating and actually how we could reuse that that was created for incorporating technologies on them. And uh, with Shin Liu, we create also this paper called Wearability Factors for Skin Interfaces. In this paper, we differentiate the different wearability factors that we could, that exist for, for creating skin interfaces. So if we think about the body itself, we think about location, body movements, body characteristics. And again, as I say, if we think about the skin, we go deeply in other kind of considerations that are not like, for example, the shape as we were talking, we talk about wrinkles, we talk about skin types, about body movements. Uh, there, there are many considerations also like that our postures, our gestures that wearables, normal wearables have, but if we think about uh, the skin, the skin have a different kind of elasticity. It kind of also changes shapes a little bit. Uh, it needs to breathe. So there are also different considerations in just in the body that we have to take a look when we create our skin interfaces. But also are the second part, the, the lower part here in the screen, that are the uh, technical aspects or technical factors, like how you will be attaching these devices to these Skin that we already talked about that, that have like all these different uh, challenges. The weight, so if we are touching this on, on our skin, it cannot have, be too heavy. Insulation is very important because, and, and I want to highlight this, uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit more later, but insulation uh, is not just about insulation of electronics, because of, but also insulation of the heat. So how we could how we could isolate our these devices from our skin so it will not create any short circuit, but also it won't heat up that could be creating any damage to our skin. Accessibility, different kind of communication, uh, interaction, aesthetics, conductors, uh, device care, how you will be kind of like uh, doing some maintenance, the connection, battery life that most wearables also have. And I will, I will talk a little bit more about two of these aspects, 
attached methods and conductors. If you want to go to more details, I also encourage you to look into the paper, but also you will ask me some questions. Uh, so if we think about the attachment, like how we are uh, kind of like incorporating these devices and placing that on the body. So if we don't have an attached method, it will fall. Uh, so we use belts for wearable technologies or watches or different clips. So it could be attached to clothing. Uh, but if we think about uh, skin interfaces, we could not just clip it in that way. So when we are creating, for example, the tools that are very, very thin layer, that it, uh, it also have different kind of conductors involved, how we could attach those to the skin. And there are many different ways to do that. Uh, some of them, as I, I mentioned, like using the on the shelf commercial products like uh, the LED eyelashes that they were using actually fake eyelashes or hair wear that it was another project I was creating that was, I was using a hair clip for attaching these hair extensions. But if we think about just the skin, there are these different uh, ways to attach them by using, for example, silicone based materials like PDMS or, or other kind of silicones or even like this kind of gecko uh, they could tool like this, uh, this animal that goes through everywhere and kind of like, kind of, kind of could move. They use a uh, very, very tiny ways to use a, create these molecules with glue. So you kind of like create this and it could be attached and it could kind of mimic also this elasticity of, of your skin. There is tattoo papers, for example, that you could also use for incorporating your electronics. If we think about conductors, and conductors is a very important part when we create uh, any kind of uh, wearable technology, uh, we usually use these rigid cables or these uh, different conducting materials, but we wanted to incorporate that to our skin that it needs to be soft, it needs to be malleable, it needs to be elastic. There are also different different materials, so you could think about conductive ink, or you could think about CPDMS, that is also kind of like, a, a, they use carbon or incorporate that into PDMS, so you could actually bend, stretch, fold. Uh, but there are also, although also new and, and different interesting materials, like for example, EGAL or any kind of alloy that is a gallium, and this is kind of a liquid, a liquid metal. Uh, you think about, for example, a thermometer inside they have mercury. It's not the same, uh, but it's kind of like similar family. But it's kind of because it's mercury is not safe for your skin or your body. But for example, gallium, you could actually incorporate that also into PDMS, create these patterns that, for example, in this uh, corner image that you could see, that it could actually stretch with your body. And if it's and one advantage of that, if it's liquid, it could stretch with your skin and it could be kind of like continuing being uh, conductive. Uh, the, con the conductive cosmetics, I will be talking also a little bit later that I was using some chemical process for plattering or metallizing eyelashes or other, con other beauty products. All, also epidermic electronics, so also these meshes that you could also create and you think, if you see this uh, in this slide, the uh, epidermal electronics has this particular mesh uh, structure, and that might be also something that you could consider in your, your design because it will allow that your skin could be straight or bland as normal skin actually uh, works. So, these are kind of like some examples for figuring out what's kind of like an overall of our skin interfaces and what's actually around our world right now. But I want you maybe uh, to ask you a question and let me try to reflect about that. And I want to ask you, what does it mean to have skin? Like for you, your skin, what it means to have skin? Could you actually reply my question to someone? I don't know, anyone? 
and we call it kind of like start listening our voices. Who wants to reply this question? What it means to have skin? Any idea? Hey. Hi. Uh, for me, the skin, it's like the packaging of the body, but also oh. highly uh, responsive in a way that you can feel things, you can react to things, you can feel pain, you can feel pleasure, you feel cold and warm, but it's really what holds everything we have inside together in a way. That, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, great. That's a great answer. So we are kind of like encapsulating all our organs, our muscles, our bones, it's kind of how we're pro protecting us to not explode in some way, but also it responds. The response, it tells us a lot of information. Yeah, that's an awesome, awesome answer. Someone else? Any other idea what it means to have skin? Hi. Um, well, here in Barcelona, we think that our skin, well, besides being the biggest organ, uh, is our natural biomaterial that has shielding properties because our skin protects us from electricity, for example. It's a natural resistance and also protects us from pollutants and radiation, like, for example, UV radiation. Yes. Great, thank you. That's also an amazing answer because we have in our skin all these layers and every layer has different filters. It protects us with, in different ways like, okay, you filter electricity as you were saying and UV lights and also different molecules or particles could not go through our skin because our layer is protecting us. That's amazing. Someone else? I think it's um, it's having in contact, you know. Hi, Katja. <laughs> uh, being, being in contact with the, the the environment and be a very big sensor. I think the, our skin is have is is like having a very big multiple sensor. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Also, yeah, we have a, all these sensors in our body that could let us know. If something is too hot, if something is too cold, we have like we could know what's the texture of something just because we have this skin and yeah, it allows us to sense everything that's around us, like the winds, everything that could go uh, and touch us, basically. Awesome. One more. Someone else wants to have another idea of what it means to skin. Still awake? <laughs> well, uh, let's think about also other possibilities of the skin. So we were, we're talking about this protection layer, this way that our skin encapsulates our body so we are not exposed but also it's kind of a filter that protects our body. It has all these sensors that allows us to understand our environment. It also uh, is kind of like a Twitter tool. You, you get red when you are nervous or when you are, have an illness. Uh, it reacts with allergies. If you create uh, goosebumps, for example, uh, that will kind of show some information about our, our emotions, but also our physical aspects. So our skin is, is also a way that we could represent our body. It's this layer that we're having uh, with us all the time and it's showing different information. So I have some wrinkles, you maybe could figure it out my age or even like how kind of like a healthier person could be or not. So our skin represents us. And also our skin is kind of like a canvas that we change it in different ways. We are, we use makeup, 
we use tattoos, we, it's a way that we are using also our skin to express our body and to express our own personalities. So with that tale, I, I, I will be trying to involve all these aspects that we're, we're, we're talking about and show you some pro projects. Uh, but let's start talking about cosmetics. So if you think about cosmetics, over the time, they didn't change very much. So, uh, Eloisa, I can see that you have a red lipstick. I have a red lipstick. Uh, my mom has a red lipstick. My grandma has a red lipstick. And if you think about Cleopatra, uh, I'm sure she also had a red lipstick. And all over the time, cosmetics by itself, um, the functionality of them, they didn't change. Even the manufacturing maybe process and maybe some materials change, but the functionality of them, they didn't change. So if I think about how we could extend its functionality, so a red lipstick will be just not to make, to highlight some part of your body or to hide some part of your body, but we could have a superpower. So I will talk about this project that is actually a concept that I created since 2012, that it's beauty technology. And beauty technology is, uh, is a way that we incorporate beauty products, but with technology, so we could make our skin as an interactive platform. And I want you to also think about, because the skin also let us having all these also possibilities uh, of how we use unconscious behavior. So uh, I cannot see all of you right now, but maybe some of you are crossing your arms, crossing your legs, maybe uh, touching your hair. So all these unconscious behaviors that we use for kind of calming ourselves. Uh, and and this is kind of natural for us. And I would like you to kind of maybe think about and try to figure it out other ways to explore the gestures that we could use so that you, the conscious use of these unconscious behaviors for creating different kind of technologies. So you think about a smartwatch or other kind of wearables. There are very, very, all these gestures are something that you learn and you, you, you have to learn to develop them. And another idea, if we think about the skin, we develop technology for the skin, we could think about gestures that already exist and we enact them. And in that way could be kind of like mimicking gestures that could be hiding. So you think about swiping your eyebrow or maybe closing your lips or touching your hair, or any kind of movement that you could have with your fingers, or touching your neck that could simulate something that you are stressed. But what if this gesture actually could have another connotation that is triggering other devices? And it also, these kind of interfaces are maybe not just a tattoo in your arm, but also on also kind of uh, different kind of technologies on makeup. But there are many other possibilities to creating these sensors all around your body. So you could think about hair extensions. You could think about uh, your elbow and how you could create maybe band-aids that could actually incorporate a technology that understand your movement. You could think about henna that could actually be using as a, as a sensor or a nail that as, as Cindy Cow was creating also could be actually incorporated that for interacting with your phone. Uh, you could think about the bird that you kind of like touch or even like a dynamic eyeshadow that it could change its color. So this is kind of like an overview of some projects I have been creating that I will be sharing with you. And the first project is the hair. If you think about the hair, it's malleable. It, you could change your hairstyle, you could change the color. Uh, but the other interesting thing about the hair is kind of a tool. 
we touch our hair when we are nervous. We touch our hair when we are too anxious or even kind of probably a flirting tool. You touch your hair when you kind of talk, talk with someone. And all these are unconscious behavior that we do for, uh, for different reasons and reflect that of for calming ourselves. So what if we use this consciously for interacting that with your house or your email or even sending a message to anyone? So the first project I will share with you is hairwear. And these are chemical metallized hair extensions that were connected to a microcontroller. So we can just touch the hair and use that as an input for triggering different objects. You can see these are hair extensions. And when you touch the hair, different methods through this Bluetooth device could be sent to a mobile phone. So in that way, some applications, and you could just send a default message just by touching your hair. Or like you think about more kind of spy or 007, you could record a conversation just by touching your hair. One thing that also you think about when you're in a risky situation, you don't want to take out your phone, you could just touch your hair and send your location, for example. Or take yourself there, but take yourself is also fun. <laughs> Uh, for creating these hair extensions, uh, and we'll see these projects involves different uh, different aspects, uh, since electronics, uh, computer science, and materials. In this one, we were using hair extensions, and with a chemical process, we are metallizing them. And this chemical process is this one that I'm sharing with you right now, and. Uh, we were using different activation, we were using copper electrolysis. That is this image actually that you can see right now, that's kind of like by using copper. Uh, but that's kind of like wasn't the color of my hair, so I had to use another electrolysis with black nickel, so it will be like looking more as a natural hair. And this is also uh, a, a chemical process that I was using for plattering. So imagine each of these hairs was a kind of cover with this material. So right now, instead of having this material that is a polymer, like common hair extensions, it could be a conducting material. And the conducting material connected to a circuit, and in this case, actually, the paper we present, we were using machine learning for creating this hair extension that is this green one in the middle, at creating the, all these non-conductive hair around it, and we could create different kind of ways to understand these gestures. So you could touch the top, the middle, the teeth, or straightening, and we will be detecting the different touches. Uh, in that way, this way that use the use of unconscious behavior by having a, a seamless device. So uh, our body also it's our skin, and I will be talking about this conducting makeup. So what if you could activate the world just by winking? So you can see we have these eyelashes, and by blinking, different light patterns turns on. And this similar way that uh, the hair extensions, we were also using a conduct uh, a chemical process for metallizing these eyelashes and to make them conductive. And in this way, we could put one eyelash on the top 
one on the bottom and also with another uh, eyeliner that it was also conductive and a circuit hiding on, on the hair, we could detect blinking. So in this example, for some, we could see this uh, superhero. This is my superhero project. And when she blinks, you could levitate things. I had like a superpower in my free time with a superhero and I could just by blinking hole, make things to fly. This was also a project that uh, that I was also sharing it in different places, and as a way that how we could use actually our winking as a way that interacted with other devices. And after that project, uh, there was there was something interesting that happened to me that was Felipe. Uh, that Felipe came to talk to me in one fair that I was in Brazil. And Felipe was twice world championship of Jiu Jitsu, six time Brazilian championship. And unfortunately, during training, he damaged himself. And right now, he, he cannot move, he is always in a wheelchair. And he came to me and he said, You know, I would like to be a superhero. There are very simple things for you guys, like changing the channels of the TV, that for me, it actually means uh, a lot of time, sometimes 30, 30 minutes of my time that I'm not doing anything. So I would like to have the superpower of just blinking, changing the channels of the TV. But of course, I wasn't going to put makeup in a guy. So we developed, and we actually, Felipe was part of the team uh, that we developed this project. Uh, we developed this project called Effects e Makeup. Effects comes from special effects. So all these uh, materials that we're using for creating, for example, a big nose or a bond uh, in Hollywood, what if we could create a second skin? and we could make our skin to be an interface. So we were creating all these very tiny sensors and we locate that in different positions on our, our face. If you think about your face, we have around 43 to 45 muscles that they move individually or in conjunction. So you could kind of raise your eyebrow or wink or smile or close your lips and this sensor will be detecting that. So that's why we created Winky Mode. And this is an infrared remote control. So we were using all these second skin with these sensors and just by blinking, uh, Felipe, and I like to share this image because this was the first time after 13 years that Felipe could turn on the TV by himself. Uh, so this, this was, all these sensors on our skin, but for Felipe it was just on uh, his eyelids, and that connected to a microcontroller that have infrared and would hack the TVs, so we could kind of turn on and change the channels just by blinking. And just to mention, uh, of course, we were using. Uh, one important part of all these projects was also programming. So we, for example, you think about blinking, your eyes keep closed around 100, 150 milliseconds every time. So you can hydrate your, your, your eyes. Uh, of course, if, for example, this is too boring, you start blinking slowly. Uh, so it, it, blinking itself it gives us a lot of information. Uh, it could tell us a lot of illnesses and a lot of ways that we interact with each other. But uh, that's why we were waiting more than half a second for creating that as a voluntary blinking. And inspiring in Felipe and Winky Mode, we create Kinesi, that it's, uh, it's another project that we were using the skin as an interface but with these, all these sensors that could be 
use it as a second skin so you could raise your eyebrow, smile, close your eyes or uh, or close your lips and then you could interact with different devices. In this case, it's an, it was an art project that was also exhibited in different places like since Barbican, London, Stockholm, uh, Ars Electronica. And it's a way that we created uh, with different Peruvian professionals in the film industry to share that as an idea of having your skin as an interface. So I will share with you this video. So we were talking about the hair, the skin, but our body surface is also your nails. So for that, I want to share some projects that we start imagining what if you could have technology in the tip of your finger, in your fingernails. Uh, so imagine that you don't need a car for opening your door or for paying the metro, just point and have it. Uh, so for that, we were using these uh, RFIDs and also this very nice way to create and already available for creating uh, fake, eyelash, fake, fake nails and how we could incorporate technology into them. So over here, we have twin nails. And if you see over here, every fingernail has a different RFID. RFID is the same technology you use for, for example, paying the metro uh, or for Starbucks or all these cars that we have maybe for your office or your house. Uh, and what if we incorporate each of them in every of our fingers? And with that, it doesn't mean that you have, you know, like you could think, figure it out that you could have one finger for paying the metro, other one for Starbucks, other one for your office, and so on. So all those cars that we have on our wallet, what if it, they could be in our fingers? Uh, in this case, we have these uh, RFIDs incorporating in fingernails, but also under it, like this kind of box, it has, um, this box has an RFID reader, and it detects this, this reading of these fingers and translate that as a music note. One thing that I want you to notice about this technology, one thing that I like about it is that, of course, we have our motor system that allows us to move our fingers in these ways. But also, if you think about that, you don't need to touch anything. So it's kind of like, is this piano in the air? Uh, that allows us to have this interface that you don't even need to touch it. With that, we were creating the same piano, but also on the body. So we're creating with Salafonica this, uh, this performance that with a pianist, she was moving around to the audience and play this piano. Uh, but also, as, as I mentioned, it's kind of like a technology in the air. We could put other kind of configurations and other kind of materials around it. As soon as it's not aluminum or something that blocks the sign signals from your uh, from your fingernails, because uh, as you might know, RFIDs works by induction. So the reader it kind of creates these kind of waves that could go to your 
antenna that is under attack in your fingernail or your RFID inside of a chip and could read it. Um, but as I say, it's just you don't need a battery because they're passive ones and it's kind of like, uh, well, you don't need a battery in your fingernail, maybe in your, in your device, in the reader, but uh, I like it that it's in the air. And what if we could put water? So I will show you this other project called AquaDJ that is the DJ controller into the water. So when the DJ puts her fingernails into the water, different tracks or artifacts will be turning on. <laughs> So let's move now a little more about color. And as some of you also mentioned, like uh, our skin changes color and it reflects different information of our body. So I, I remember I was doing this interview and like they were asking me like, how many makeup do you think we should have? And actually my ideal would be to have just one and it could change its color and react and, and whatever you want, it will be changing uh, like a filter or a Snapchat, something like that. So how we, we make it real? Uh, how we could change the makeup automatically? So we create this project and this was a project we were created with Cindy Kao and Manisha, Manisha Mohan at MIT Media Lab. And we were using uh, thermochromic inks or these crystal liquids and they could interact and change its color. So dynamically we could even change its color by changing its temperature. So we could change, for example, from purple to pink or any other color that, the, and liquid crystal is a very interesting material that actually you could even explore. And I think that I saw in some of the, of the, of the lives from Instagram Fabric Academies, I think that you were also using them. Uh, so is this uh, thermochromic inks is a kind of a liquid material. There are all, all other kinds, so you want to explore. There are UV, for example. Uh, but thermochromic inks, it changes color with temperature. Uh, but for that, we need to change the temperature. And you could imagine like the passive way to do that is our skin, it actually changes color. And the temperature of our body goes around 37 degrees Celsius. So that could be a good way that if you have that particular liquid crystals that changes color in that, in that level. But what if we could do that automatically? In this case, we have this way that we are changing the color of the eyeshadow. And I want, oh, oops, I move it. Ah. Uh, one thing I want to mention about this project, oh, I don't know how to go back. Well, uh, the, the Chroma Screen project, it have like different layers. It have a layer with the thermochromic inks. It have another layer with the circuit itself. Like in this video, the one we were using was a conductive thread. So we create with this resistance and uh, with that on the top of the, of the thermochromic inks and also an insulated layer because this is changing the temperature and we didn't want it to 
burned our skin, so we had to figure it out other materials for uh, for insulating our skin. Uh, there are many insulator materials that are already used uh, for electronics that you could explore. The ones that we were using were based on silicon and also combined with other molecules that could be insulating uh, our skin. Uh, so we have like insulator layer, well, first the thermochromic, thermochromic uh, layer, then the, the, the second layer was the circuit itself that it was heating up, the, the third layer was the insulator one that allows not uh, to be in contact with the skin, and also another layer for the adhesive, and we were using the two paper for that. Uh, well, this project, just to mention, it was uh, all these projects, some of them, they were already startups that were inspired on them, and they were creating different kind of projects around, like for paying the meter with your fingernail, for example, to also buy them. So for me, beauty technology is a way that we could transform traditional ways that we use cosmetics, interactive ones. So our skin could be an interface. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, there is also a way that we could create devices that are not noticeable and not are not noticeable just in the to hide the electronics, but also to hide the interactions itself. So that's why we are using these unconscious behaviors. And also, this is a new field into wearable computing. And the main goal of this project is to extend this horizon of human device symbiosis. Other thing that we were also discussing is about the skin and how it changes its color and how it manifests itself. It tells us information about, for example, uh, when you are too nervous or shy about something or some other information that let us know that you are having some allergy or something is going on inside your body. Uh, so it already tells us a lot of information. But what if we wanted to have information that uh, we don't have access to? So for example, you wanted to do uh, if you wanted to know your cholesterol levels or your glucose, you had to do a blood test. That's the only way. Uh, but there are some cases that we can have our skin as a way to share that information. We created this project called the Dermalabis, a collaboration between MIT Media Lab and Harvard Medical School. And we were using biosensors and tattoos. So tattoos, that instead of having these uh, traditional ink, we were using biosensors. Biosensors that you think about, like these strips that you could ur urinate on them and it changes color and revealing different levels of pH in your life, in your body, for example. What if we could have that permanently as a tattoo? So for that, we were using different, uh, different biosensors like sodium, pH, glucose, and these were changing its color or the fluorescence of them. And with that, we could incorporate like a traditional way we were tattooing. So this liquid, instead of using the liquid that it was in traditional inks, we were using the tradition, like the biosensor that was developed at Harvard Medical School. And we were incorporating that through uh, an ex vivo model. That means fake skin. Uh, let me just go through this. So this uh, could let us to think about new possibilities for body modification. Body modification that we usually have as a static. So you do that to it, like its color, it will be the same. But what if it could be interactive? And what if it could be used for monitoring your body? So it could change its color and reveal information from your body. Uh, of course, uh, like this is a simulation, like this image right now. Uh, and also uh, we did some, we are in the very, uh, very beginning stage on our, our research. 
We are continuously doing this project now with Imperial College of London, and the idea is again to how you could have access to the compartments of your skin uh, that you usually don't have access to. Uh, so I cannot make a tattoos for you right now, but it's kind of like open a new possibility, even, even for biotechnologies. So we could imagine other possibilities for biosensors that could be uh, surrounded in body modification techniques like tattoos. These uh, also have different design goals. If you think about how we could have a skin as an interactive display, that will reveal information from inside of you. Uh, technology that is indistinguishable from the human body, and that's one of the main goals that I actually have as a designer in, in, my, in most of my projects. So how technology could be indistinguishable, and you cannot, and you cannot figure it out what that was happening. Uh, how you could use the metabolism as an input. So if you think about technology, it, it was usually you have a button or you press something, but what if the metabolism is the one that it makes it to react? And also there are many other body modification techniques. Uh, as I mentioned, we did this in this ex vivo model, big skin, and there we did some tests, but there are other tests that might be done. Uh, and if you think about many other body modification techniques and some other crazy ones, that could also incorporate these different ways that could be used for health monitoring your body. Okay, so uh, I want to jump now to go to figure out what are the assignments for uh, these weeks, I guess, because we go through a, a, a break. Uh, so I prepared three possibilities for you guys. So you could figure it out which is the one that it will be more adaptable for what you wanted to create. Uh, I wanted to mention that these projects and one of the, my main goals of, of creating these projects is for you to be as much as creative and as creative as possible. And, and that's why I also like a lot to be part of the Fabry Academy uh, team because I, I know that you guys are, are, are kind of achieving that in many ways. Uh, and these three different prototypes, I will be just sharing for you kind of like standard ways to do it. But uh, the encourage of this project is to figure it out how you customize them in different ways and you create something that will be more adaptable, more on your own touch or your own style. Uh, so the first option is how you will be creating your first skin interface. So for that, as an inspiration, you could think about these different uh, ways that like kids do this makeup for creating uh, these different designs as a Spider-Man, Superman, Wonder Girl, uh, also other ways to use crystals inside of your body, so kind of like all these makeup that girls do that kind of like uh, elements in different ways and extrapolate also uh, the, the, the makeup that they could have. Also, uh, this Hollywood uh, approach of creating kind of second skins and how we could actually create even 3D shapes around your body and around your skin. Uh, like being, making a big nose or kind of like molding itself around your skin. And uh, so these are kind of like some inspirations that you could have. Uh, and this is a project that I was creating also at MIT Media Lab. We were in the Halloween event uh, for the 30 year anniversary. And we were doing this face mask with makeup artists and also these different lights that they changed color. They were like the kids were going inside the haunted house and then the lights turned on and the monster appeared and were kind of scary for some of them maybe. But it was kind of like how we could have uh, different kind of electronics and kind of like as much as creative as possible as, as I, I feel like art and 
and makeup is makeup is actually an art so how you could actually envision in other ways that you could incorporate that art to create this this carnival mask that's how i used to call it we were using uh, special effect makeup and also these different uh, devices that will be incorporated that we were using uh, a device that we were using if you think about like this cold play uh, shows that they have like these bracelets and everyone in the audience have this bracelet and they change its color we were using that and we were changing actually the the rhythms of that um, that devices with the with the music and also depending on where, where people were uh, so uh, we could think about other ways to do that but uh, I will just go through very basic ones so for this project you could be using an Adafruit Gemma or an, any kind of other Arduino board I recommend the smallest one these boards are usually kind of hiding on the hair or in uh, around the body but try to hide them uh, we have flora neopixels i put them in the neopixels but you could think about other kind and i will actually recommend that the smallest as possible the better uh, also a battery holder and also batteries for interacting with that uh, other tools that you could need that thin wires, wire strippers, uh, sodium iron, E600 craft glue. I usually use that also for isolating some electronics more if they are kind of like bigger, like the Neopixel, so you can put that on, on the back of it. And also other kind of liquid latex and sponge applicator. I usually use the product for the, instead of liquid latex, I use uh, from smooth on uh, so that could be also a possibility uh, there are some things that as I mentioned uh, we have two different wearability factors when we create key interfaces one is the body the other one is electronics so you think about the body think about how you will be creating the how you will encapsulate in your electronics you could use for example liquid liquid latex uh, how you will be attaching that to the skin. There is already some skin glues that you could be using, so it will be not falling. Uh, even like the same, the same latex could attach to your skin, so that could be also another possibility. And you could also use other ways to uh, create different kind of aesthetics too, like glitter or other kind of crystals or other kind of devices. Uh, other kind of ways that you will incorporate that to create and uh, like the aesthetics that you want or other kind of makeup uh, but the very basic ones will be the liquid latex and the skin glue for uh, gluing that to your skin and the electronics the LEDs the wires and also very very important the isolation uh, so when you are incorporating wires and even if you are incorporating wires that will be uh, like open wires so you have to be careful with that and when you put that on your body remember your skin is also conductive so if your skin is also conductive we have all this humidity oily uh oily skin so if you're if you have you have open circuits on your skin you could capture circuits and you don't want to capture circuits on your skin uh so uh very very important try to figure it out what will be the isolation uh, material that you will be using that could be uh, the silicone itself. Uh, so just make make sure that you are applying that on the top of your skin before you apply the electronics or other other kind of skin glues, for example, that will be a good way that 
uh, it won't be the circuit in direct contact with your skin. So there are different steps that you have to follow. First, you have to plan it. So where are you putting the electronics together? Because remember, we have we, are, we will be dealing kind of like a 3D shape that is our skin, our body, our faces, or other parts of our bodies. So figure it out how it will be the length of the cables uh, that allows also the movement, natural movement of your skin. So plan that before. And also in the design aspect, which are the materials you are using. Uh, latex usually takes more than one hour to dry. So try to get it, make it dry before you start applying the electronics. And then you can apply other layers on the top of your electronics. So it will be kind of isolated too. Uh, so if you, for example, use uh, this masquerade ball mask or other kind of ma uh, masks, uh, try to use kind of like a plastic ones, uh, or you could even create your own one. You want to 3D print that. Uh, you are using that as a mold or any other kind of mold that you wanted to use. Try to use Vaseline or other release for before applying the liquid latex or that silicone that you will be using. So that that will allow you to take it, pull it out. Uh, and also, uh, you could actually use any, not just glitter, but any kind of other paint or other way to use your aesthetics for your masks. Uh, let it dry before you actually connect to your battery and everything. Uh, and then the step number three, think about the circuit. Uh, for example, in this case, I'm sharing with you these schematics that you are, you could be using, uh, for example, like, and you might already know that of how to turn on, uh, you know, pixels. So you have positive, negative layer, and then uh, the data in and data out. So you could connect any any neo pixels over here. Here we have five. Uh, I'm sharing with you also this uh, code from Adafruit that they also create all different kind of uh, LED masks. So you could check if you wanted to kind of refresh yourself or how to use Neopixels and Hema. Uh, and then how to assemble everything. So glue the circuit to the first layer of the skin and add more later, latex if you think it's necessary because you need to keep it dry. Uh, if you use a mold like a mask, as I was mentioning, uh, and before you have like the Vaseline or the release, but then you are incorporated as a silicone material on the top. Uh, remember that you it will be kind of like it's a mold, so you will be taking it out. So the LEDs will be in the opposite side and try to do that as close as possible to the first layer. And the, the latest layer will be adding more silicone, so you will be not having your circuits in contact with your skin. Second option. So what if you wanted to create nail interfaces? Uh, so as I mentioned, nail interfaces, it has an interesting functionality that you will need to touch the device. And it, it's around two centimeters away from the reader. Uh, some possibilities is you wanted to create a wearable that have an, a reader. And, you know, in this case, for example, this belt has an XV radio that was communicated to my computer. So I could be interacted with that. Or the water interfaces like the Aqua DJ project. So you could also create your, your own DJ controller or any other one. So this water interface also could be explored in different possibilities. I was working with a DJ. I was also working with an opera singer. So they were creating their own performances. But you can imagine other ways to use these devices. Uh, materials that you could be using for this. You could be using an Arduino Uno. And if you see on the top of it, there is a shield. This shield is a reader. And the reader will be uh, reading uh, or sensing every of your fingernails. So every of your fingernails will have a different ID. And in the programming, you will check uh, which which of these each of these RFIDs uh, will be having a different functionality. Uh, 
you will be also trying to use fake nails if you want. If you wanted to you create your own nails, there is acrylic liquid, glue and powder. I will show you to you that too. So this is a traditional way that if you go to a salon, and actually that's what I usually do when I have to do a performance, I go to a salon and I go and I I say to the salon salon uh, person, I say like, oh, I want to do my nails, but I want to incorporate this chip and I'm preparing you for the future. And I show to them how it works and I found like interesting way also to work with them. Uh, so for this, uh, as I mentioned, you have this reader. The one that I sharing with you, it works with 13.56 megahertz. That means that there are different RFIDs and different different tags that you could be using. There are some tags, for example, NFCs. NFCs that could be using, for example, for your phone, some phones or some, some tablets, they already have the reader that you could actually read that with your fingernails. Uh, so, so you have two different, let's say, devices right now. You have your fingernails that will incorporate in these tags. Uh, the ones that I was sharing with you are these stickers that are kind of like, are very, very tiny, but you could think about other ones that if you already have them, or you could even hack some of them. So if you want, for example, to change, you reduce the metro of whatever city you are, and you could use acetone to dilute, uh, dilute the card or this polymer, and when you download it, you could take out the chip and you could incorporate that in your fingernail. That's also another possibility. But I just wanted to make sure that you understand that there are like different tags and different tags have different uh, frequencies. Uh, so make sure that you will be using the right frequency for, for your reader. So you could be actually reading your tags. Uh, so if you wanted to hide NFC into nail products, there are these these materials that are actually commercially available. So you have a liquid monomer and polymer powder. And when you mix both products, it kind of creates this acrylic that at the very beginning is liquid, but after a little bit and after UV, it cures and it makes it harder, very, very hard. So that's how you can incorporate your tag also on the top of it. Alternatively, you could even use fake nails and attach that stickers or any other NFC or RFIDs to your, your fake nails. Uh, the circuit, uh, this one is very simple. You just have to solder them and there's a shield that you put under the top. Figure it out other ways if you wanted to explore, for example, similar to the Aquadigen project, I had to create like the aquarium and how to put that on the bottom part of my aquarium so it will be actually reachable from the top of the aquarium. Uh, I'm sharing with you also in my GitHub this code uh, of the Beauty Tech nails. So you could actually incorporate that. And uh, this one was with, uh, this This project is is, uh, is the piano in the air, the twinkle nails. So you could use this and adapt that in the way that you want. Uh, so you could test it. Remember, each fingernail will have a different ID. So think about that to to figure it out which project you want to explore. Uh, third option, if you want to do the hair project. Uh, so what if you wanted to create? So this is interesting because again, you are creating a seamless device that not just the device is seamless but also the interaction with it is seamless. So you could think about every hair extension that it becomes a conducting material, kind of a similar way. I don't know if you guys already did the capacitive sensors. Uh, capacitive sensor is the same way in your phone it works. So you touch it and it will be detected uh, because you're changing the resistance on, on every of your, or the capacitance on every of your hair. And that could be detected by your, by your, by your project. Uh, what you will mean, uh, the, the ones that I 
could recommend you for starting creating these kind of projects. You could be using an Arduino microcontroller. I would recommend this Adafruit uh, capacity touch sensor. Uh, I put here the, the number you want to check, or you could also create your own if you want. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a basic uh, touch sensor. Uh, you could use conductive thread to figure it out how this could work and embedded that into hair extensions. Uh, and you could use LEDs, buzzer, or any other actuator. You will need, of course, hair extensions or hair clips, so you could actually put that on your hair. Uh, make sure that, that where the, the one that when you connect that directly to your, to your, for example, if it's a clip and you connect that to your to your hair, try to make that non-conductive. That means because again, your skin is conductive and you wanted to isolate that in some way because you wanted to have like less capacity as possible, even if you are wearing, for example, a top that uh, your hair could be in contact with your skin, try to avoid that. So it will have like kind of an isolation too. Another layer. Uh, so again, what well, you have to do, plan it. So, Think about the electronics you are using and also the design that you wanted to create and maybe something else that you wanted to explore. So in this case, we were exploring hair extensions and the touch on it. And you could think about other ways and the touch of it was kind of turning on some LEDs, but you could think about other ways that you wanted to explore and how actually hair could be actually used. As I mentioned, there were some, some application of that or for example, sending a message through your phone or sending your location to the police. Think other ways that you could be using these hair extensions too. Uh, how you'll be using, how you'll be creating your hair design. So these hair extensions usually come already with these hair clips that you could be actually reusing that. So make sure with a multimeter test, if it's actually conductive and with not too much resistance. So you could connect your conductive threads to that, and you could actually create that as a circuit and connecting that to your microcontroller. Uh, this is uh, the schematic, so you will be thinking about the circuit of that. Uh, again, in this case, I was using this already uh, on the shelf uh, capacity sensor, but you could actually make your own and connecting your hair extension to it. This is the code. If you want to check this code, again, was used for uh, like the, the, the same materials or the same components I was sharing with you uh, with a um, NeoPixel strip that was turning on and off, depending on when the hair was touched. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, your skin is conductive, so try to add some layer so you could kind of reduce the sensitivity from your skin. Okay, so uh, try to choose one of these to so select whatever you will be more willing to do in these weeks. Personalize it. So try to make some changes, not just in the electronics, but maybe in the aesthetics and the way that you wanted to create your own touch and your own style. Uh, you could also improve the design. Think about changing some colors, adding crystals, and you want to think about the aesthetics, 3D elements, or other ways that you want to kind of like figure it out how your skin actually could have different shapes. Uh, in the presentation, don't forget uh, to explain your process, of course, but explain the motivation of why you did that and how you could customize your project. Okay. Uh, do anyone have any questions or comments or ideas or Anything? Want to talk about something? Does anybody have any comments? I do have a question. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking to make a tie. Um, uh -huh. Is not um, on the body? No, it's like an accessory. No. And that that's that's okay, or or it needs to be in the body inside of it. No, inside on the body. No. 
Yeah, I think that as you already had the experience of working with the textiles and working with uh, wearables itself, like this accessory, uh, maybe it will be a good experience for you to, to go closer to the body and the skin. Uh, maybe you could use the tie uh, to hide electronics and maybe that's connected to maybe some sensors that will be on your blinking, for example, or uh, or your hair or, or your beard. I can see that you have some bear, so maybe you could have some sensors over there. But uh, as this project will be for you guys kind of like figuring out other possibilities for your skin and how you could augment it. So maybe start thinking in that direction. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking because uh, of that, it's, it's more about the skin, no? So, okay, it's clear. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, great. Awesome. Uh, so, another that has experience yeah. in electronics, you need to make a very, very tiny copper <laughs> uh, circuit patch with a tiny, tiny, 80 tiny uh, that you just put silicone and put it on your skin. Uh, with a little battery from the ones of the clock, of the watch. Yeah, that would be amazing, actually. <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> and it just uh, has a light, uh, a little LED, like uh, saying, like, your level of uh, humidity or your level of uh, the galvanic skin response or, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, that would be amazing. Thanks, Anastasia. <laughs> yeah, David has another question. I get another question. Um, I know you heard that um, in the Second World War, they were using the cyanoacrylate glue for, for um, holding the wounds together. So they didn't have the, actually the, um, the medical equipment to actually the wounds. They used, used the, that cyan, cyanoacrylate. They, I think they call it super glue in some of the yeah. parts that are going to name. What do you think about that, that glue? Do you think it's good for using in this application? Yeah, definitely you could explore that. Um, I didn't use it by myself, but there are some applications that I could even share with you. Like it wasn't exactly like the glue, but kind of like bandages, like that you could be actually creating. And with that bandage, you could actually send like muscle movement, for example. So if we kind of like remote, maybe in the war time, so you could think about like, oh, how much the patient is kind of like making some movements for recovering or other kind of applications. But uh, that material could be actually very interesting to explore. Maybe I won't recommend to put that on your skin. Uh, because you know, like it might have like it have like some kind of medical applications that are kind of very, um, very particular. So, but maybe you could act, it could be actually interesting way uh, to to incorporate other kind of materials. And also, uh, I didn't mention, but other ways that you guys as as now that they were mentioning that you were using the the tiny. Microcontroller, you could think about, oh, you know, creating other kind of circuit patterns by using, for example, golden leaf or in any other kind of copper sheet and creating that and incorporating that and incorporating that through silicon. Uh, but another possibility for this project, uh, and I would love to see that maybe instead of silicon, you could actually use this glue that actually will be very interesting to see how it will work. Yeah, that will be awesome to see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Katya. And um, your review will be after uh, the vacation. So it will be on the 14th of January. And uh, it was very nice to hear you again. And, oh, fantastic. Uh, For me, it was a pleasure. And Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> awesome. so